Memorial Day has a special meaning to everyone. Speaking with me on what Memorial Day means to her is Marine Corps veteran and the CEO of Vetcom, Kate Monroe. Kate, finally, face to face with you. Finally, yes. Thank you so much for having me this morning. All right, well, let's get right. Well, first of all, uh, what did you do in your branch of the service? What, what was your job title? Uh, in the Marine Corps, I was a 2621, which is an intel analyst. So signals code, dit, dit, da, you know, Morse code. You, can you can you still do it? Uh, I could do SOS. Did it? Da da da. Did it? <laughs> well, that's, I could do that's SOS. That's all I got. Come right? on, Kate. Hey, I can do it. It's been 20 years. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for your service and thank you for driving in after a, a late night concert. Yes, it was a beautiful concert. But I'm so honored and blessed to be here for this topic, especially. Well, every guest I'm sitting across from this morning gets this, this opening question: What does Memorial Day mean to you? You know, Memorial Day to me is just. It's been crafted differently since getting out of the Marine Corps and now helping veterans. It's changed my perspective over time. But I think that Memorial Day to me is not so much a like a sadness and a mourning and a loss, but more of a celebration of uh, sacrifice. You know, the generations have made, I'm a third generation, um, not Marine, but third generation military. So for me, it has a really big impact, but in helping veterans uh, over the last three years, it, it just means something a little different to me because I realize that that sacrifice touches so many people. You know, if you rip back the thread, it touches their mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, their Absolutely. kids, their brothers, their sisters. I'm um, certainly all the veterans that they left behind, you know, in the wake of their sacrifice. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I think you kind of answered it already. Is, does, does the holiday change as a former military per member as now somebody who is in the business of helping? former military people. Oh my gosh, it changes so much. I think one of the first people that I ever helped to get their rating was uh, Corporal Chris Kane. And I'm going to briefly tell you his story, but they called him in on the Marine Corps birthday. They were overseas and they said, we're taking fire in this building. We're losing all the Marines. And he scaled a huge fence with 200 pounds of gear with his giant, you know, 50 cal, made it into the building, um, saved every single person in there. Wow. Uh, a huge bulldozer came in and accidentally crushed his leg. He ended up passing out. They met a vacuum out um, to do multiple surgeries and in his mind when he got medevac out everybody was safe well the second he wakes up from surgery watches the news all the people he saved got taken down in a helicopter and he watched them right on this giant screen he lost all of his friends that he just saved and so I think the gravity of the situation that people face you know really hit me um, because of his you oh. know just his oh. like deep sadness like it, it absolutely crushed me and I think once I understood, you know, the, the magnitude of, of the sacrifices that people make, you know, I, I did not go to combat. It just completely revolutionized and changed the way that I focus on those that are still here. I bet. So what do you want to say to those, specifically the combat vets that are, are back? Well, what would your message to them be today? You know, all you combat vets, because I, you know, 90% of people that we help end up making mental health claims, you know, about PTSD. And I would say that almost all of them are centered around the loss of their buddies. You know, I don't hear a lot of the ravages of war and, and, and things like that really plaguing them. It's that they lost their friend or that they had to uh, tell a mother that um, she had lost her son or, you know, be involved in all of the mi military burials. And so I would tell them, don't sit with this alone. Don't view your fellow um, service person's, you know, death as, as, a, as a lost life. It was a sacrificed life. And they, you know, I, I like to think when we lose them here and we host this beautiful military burial, on the other side of that, you know, as they're welcomed into the gates of heaven, there's a huge celebration for them. And we need to start celebrating them and, and honor them. And, and so we need to live. You know, that's what I would say. In your line of work, are there people walking around post-combat, post-service who are suffering from symptoms and are unaware of it? Oh, I would say... You know, in helping people, they all often come to me for orthopedic things. And as we start to speak with them over the course of, you know, an hour or so, and we start to talk about their mental health, most people will start crying and they realize, man, the, the, uh, reclu you know, the reclusive behavior that I have, the anger that I have, the deep sadness that I have, the ability to, inability to function, you know, and they look back and they go, yeah, this is PTSD. And we try to call it out and, and help them. With so that. they're undiagnosed and that, that's kind of Correct. what you're doing right now yeah. is to help them get, because let's face it, the, the, the scariest thing about post-service is the suicide rate. I mean, I mean it's just, we have, to, we have to remedy that, do we not? Oh, I mean, I would tell all of you at home, you know, sitting, watching, anybody at the brink of suicide, anybody that has suicidal ideation over your fellow brothers and sisters being lost in war, 
they are at the same time looking down at you saying, please do not. Get help. Please yeah, go and yeah. get help because we've lost enough lives to war. We don't need to lose them here War. domestically because of that deep grief. Uh, the message I would want to say: Look at how well, look how the station rallies around Memorial Day. Yeah. You are loved, you are respected, and we need you here. I mean, I, I I hope that's what part of Memorial Day is: is to yeah. help people with those kind of uh, uh, that kind of damage upstairs that they can. Yeah, we want you to stay. You're yeah, loved. make that sacrifice yeah. of value yeah. that you know. Do it. It's like I think you know, there's this great verse: "Greater love hath no man than he lay down his life for his friend." You know, your friends loved you so much, and you know, they love our country so much they're willing to do that. We need to bless them with living. I, I went to Omaha Beach in December, and now that's I don't know if you can see it on your mind. That's where I want to go next. I, I want to go see the the tomb of the unknown soldier. Beautiful. And hear the clicking of those boots as they go up back and forth. Yes, amazing. Highly recommend. Well, thank you. For, I know you're running on uh, an empty tank right now, <laughs> so thank you for that. I hope you get some rest and the first conversation. I hope we can do this again. Yes, I do too. Thank you so much. All right, Kate Monroe, everybody. We will kick it back to Allie Wagner, who's over at the.